back to the Amazing Nim channel. This is your brother T-Roy. Today we're going to jump into some comedy. The GOAT, George Carlin. And this one is on feminism and religion. George has some great insights on a lot of stuff, so let's just jump right into it. Now I probably got the feminists all pissed off at me because I'm joking about rape. Feminists want to control your language. Feminists want to tell you how to talk. And they're not alone. They're not alone. I'm not picking on the feminists. They got a lot of company in this country. There's a lot of groups, a lot of institutions in this country want to control your language. Tell you what you can say and what you can't say. Government wants to tell you some things you can't say because they're against the law. Or you can't say this because it's against the regulation. Or here's something you can't say because it's a secret. You can't tell him that because he's not clear to know that. Government wants to control information and control language because that's the way you control thought. And basically that's the game they're in. Same with religion. Religion is nothing but mind control. Religion is just trying to control your mind, control your thoughts. So they're going to tell you some things you shouldn't say because they're sins. And besides telling you things you shouldn't say, religion's going to su suggest to you some things you ought to be saying. Here's something you ought to say first thing when you wake up in the morning. Here's something you ought to say just before you go to sleep at night. Here's something we always say on the third Wednesday in April after the first full moon in spring at four o'clock when the bells ring. Religion is always suggesting things you ought to be saying. Same with political groups of all kinds. Political activists, anti-bias groups, special interest groups are going to suggest the correct political vocabulary, the way you ought to be saying things, and that's where the feminists come in. Now, as I said, I got nothing against the feminists. In fact, I happen to agree with most of the feminist philosophy I have read. I agree, for instance, that for the most part, men are vain, ignorant, greedy, brutal assholes who just about ruined this planet. Who just, who just about ruined this planet because they're afraid someone might have a bigger dick out there somewhere. <laughs> Men are basically insecure about the size of their dicks, and so they go to war over it. You don't have to be a political scientist or a history major to see the bigger dick foreign policy theory at work. It goes something like this. What? They have bigger dicks? Bomb them! And of course, the bombs and the bullets and the rockets are all shaped like dicks. I don't understand that part of it, but it is part of the equation. So I agree with that abstract, that, that man, men, Males have pushed a technology that just about has this planet in a stranglehold. Mother Earth, raped again. Guess who? Hey, she was asking for it. <laughs> I also happen to like it when feminists attack these fat-ass housewives who think there's nothing more to life than sitting home on the telephone, drinking coffee, watching TV, and pumping out a baby every nine months. <laughs> Will seven be enough, Bob? <laughs> but what's the alternative? What's the alternative to pumping out a unit every nine months? Pointless careerism? Pointless careerism? Putting on a man-tailored suit with shoulder pads and imitating all the worst behavior of men? This is the noblest thing that women can think of? To take a job in a criminal corporation that's poisoning the environment and robbing customers out of their money? This is the worthiest thing they can think of? Isn't there something nobler they could do to be helping this planet heal? You don't hear much about that from these middle-class women. I've noticed that most of these feminists are white middle-class women. They don't give a shit about black women's problems. They don't care about Latino women. All they're interested in is their own and reproductive freedom and their pocketbooks. But when it comes to changing the language, I think they make some good points. Because we do think in language. And so the quality of our thoughts and ideas can only be as good as the quality of our language. So maybe some of this patriarchal shit ought to go away. I think spokesman ought to be spokesperson. I think chairman ought to be chairperson. I think mankind ought to be humankind. But they take it too far. They take themselves too seriously. They exaggerate. They want me to call that thing in the street a person hole cover. I think that's taking it a little bit too far. What would you call a ladies' man? A person's person? That would make a he-man an it person. Little kids would be afraid of the boogie person. They'd look up in the sky and see the person in the moon. Guys would say, come back here and fight like a person, and we'd all sing for it's a jolly good person. That's the kind of thing you would hear on Late Night with David Letter person. You know what I mean? So...
So I think it's an exaggeration, and I like to piss off any group that takes itself a little bit too seriously. And it does not take a lot of imagination to piss off a feminist. All you gotta do is run into Now Headquarters or Ms. Magazine and say, Hey, which one of you cute little cupcakes wants to come home and cook me a nice meal and give me a blowjob? <laughs> blowjob! <laughs> <laughs> yeah man uh, sometimes the whole feminism and political correctness all that stuff is just kind of gone a little bit too far man on on some things um, yeah I, I get exactly what he's saying and I do get what some of the feminists are saying but I don't think any of those feminists really want true equality um, they still want chivalry and all this other kind of stuff. They want the best parts of equality. And then on the other side, they want the best benefits of non-equality. That's what I think. And if you're going to go around wanting equality, lady, you got to get it from all sides. You got to take it all. You can't just a la carte the parts you want and all this other kind of stuff. So I dig where he's coming from. And I also dig where he's saying, like, certain factions in life, uh, religious or whatever, try to get you thinking a certain way. That's a, a big problem to me in uh, human existence, especially in the time we read in right now. Everybody wants to follow the herd and go with what society thinks, and some of that's good. But think for yourselves, people. Think for yourself. If you always going for the herd mentality, you, you get what you deserve, I think. You get what you deserve. The thing I, I think I think people should do is pick and choose the things that's right for them as far as the people they want to hang around and um, who they want to socialize and the activities that they do. You have a choice in all those things. But in worldly thinking, I think, you should think for yourself. Go back, do research for yourself, and find out about things that you know, maybe everybody's talking about X, Y, and Z. Go find out the inner details of that thing, of that thing that's being talked about. My biggest thing is think for yourself, people. Think for yourself. Don't don't be a mindless drone just roaming around doing stuff just because some book or some government or some parent is uh, telling you X, Y, and Z about stuff. Go find out the truth about it. Your parents don't know everything. So um, take what they say. Um, for what it is, but definitely go do research on your own. I, I am not a good follower. I am not a good follower, I think, for myself. But this bit by George was great. I enjoyed it. Feminism and religion. I want to thank you guys for coming out and watching the Amazing Nim channel. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you next time on the Amazing Nim. Take care.